Wait, what? So this happened. I'm Rachel Vallesnor, and this is the podcast Hell is Not the End, although it feels like just the beginning sometimes. Is anything really the end, though? This podcast is meant to explore the limitless possibilities of one's own soul. Why do people do bad things? Why are there countless happenings beyond understanding? Why, when we are cautioned not to do something, do we just do it anyway? The definition of curiosity, a strong desire to know or learn something. There you have it. I will curiously explore why. Hell is not the end. With so many things out of control in general, I thought it best to extend last week's spotlight episode. With bipolar disorder, anxiety, and depression affecting more than 45 million people, it is overwhelming to say the least. I feel it is possible that all of us have been affected in some way or another. I have a friend that always says, if it's not something, something else. Isn't that the truth? Jonathan Gregory Brandis was born on April 13, 1976 in Danbury, Connecticut. Born to Mary and Gregory Brandis. Mary was a teacher and his personal manager. Gregory was a food distributor and firefighter. At the age of two, Jonathan starts his career as a child model for Buster Brown Shoes. When he is four, he begins acting in television commercials. By age six, he lands a role in a soap opera, which prompts his family to move to Los Angeles, California. The door opens for him to appear in several guest appearances on popular television shows. At the age of 14, Jonathan is cast in his first starting role in Never Ending Story 2. The next chapter is the main character, Bastion. Also the same year, he is cast in Stephen King's It, which is a miniseries representing King's horror novel that was published in 1986. Jonathan played one of seven children terrorized by an evil entity that exploits the fears of its victims to disguise itself while hunting its prey. His performance was praised by critics and audiences alike. He appeared in several movies at age 17. He gets a role in Sequest DSV, which propels him into kind of a teen idol status? At one point, he received about 4,000 fan letters a week and had to have studio security guards escort him to and from the set, past many female fans. Sequest DSV aired from 1993 to 1996, spanning over three seasons. Jonathan will continue to appear in movies as well as television spots. He also directed independent films and authored screenplays. On November 11, 2003, Jonathan was found hanged in his hallway of his Los Angeles apartment. He was rushed to the hospital and died the next day due to injuries resulting from his hanging. It's only after his death that it is reported by friends that he was depressed with his career. In drinking heavily, he had said that he intended to kill himself. Jonathan dies by suicide at the age of 27. In this episode, I also have a guest that has some insight into why so many young people may have struggles with depression, anxiety in this world, where nothing is normal. Well, where nothing that you are used to is normal. I would like to introduce Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Thanks for, like, coming on. Of course. <sighs> so, no, do, breathe. So, tell me. What do you have to say, like, what, what is most, like, affecting you in, with this episode? Um, I would say all of it, because I get, I have a lot of people in my life that are affected by all of these topics, and I am personally affected by all these topics. So, like, depression, anxiety, even suicide? Yes. Okay. So, tell us a little bit about that. Like, um, um, <laughs> like when it started? Yeah, like, totally. Like, so when you started feeling these ways yourself, tell us how you felt this way. What and why? Um, I would say it started around when I was like seven. Um, I had a good childhood growing up, but, um, it started to like go downhill around seven because my dad... And, uh, he cheated on my mom, and I had to tell her. <laughs> um, you had to tell her? I had to tell her. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> um, he 
so we were living behind City Market and with um, this one of my dad's friends and um, he would call this woman every night and I started to get, you know, confused even though I was seven. I didn't know what it was. But, um, yeah, they would call every night and one time he made me call her mom on the phone and... This other woman? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It was really weird. And, uh... Did you do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I didn't want to. <laughs> but, um... That is super not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like, spent a month with my dad, and then when we left to go back down to Denver, because that's where I was living at the time, mm. um... Uh, <laughs> I had to tell my mom that night, so... Okay, so if you had to call this other woman mother, or mom, or whatever, how did she react? She didn't know. My mom didn't know. No, this other woman oh, that the you other called woman? mom. <sighs> you, if, you, if your dad's like, hey, let's call my mistress mom, that'd be great. Right. Were you like, uh, was she like, um, huh? <laughs> I don't even think she cared at that point. It was really weird. I don't know, it was a really weird what situation. What a weird dynamic. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Anyways, ew. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then a few years later, um, well, not even a few years later, um, that year, um, around when I was turning eight, so that would be the next year, but I don't know what, I don't know what I'm saying, um, <laughs> my mom was gonna move to Texas because that's where my grandma was. Oh, to like <laughs> take care of her and stuff? No. Or just to like be with her? To be with her because my dad cheated. Oh, so it's kind of like, oh, okay, we have to move go back to mom. Thing. Yeah, I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right. Gotcha. And um, so when we moved to Texas, um, oh, it was just, it was crazy. But we drove there and I had a cat, whatever. That was nice. Um, I feel like you always have a cat. I always have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh my God. So my grandma um, in 2014, so. I thought I would be seven around that time. So, yeah, that was, like, around the time my grandpa died. And, um... Uh, grandpa on your dad's side or mom's side? Mom's. Okay, gotcha. And my grandma was a really, really bad drunk. Ooh. So, um, when we moved there, you know, I thought it was gonna be fun. Like, it's not that it wasn't, but she was a drunk, and we would have to, like, pick her up from bars, like, totally drunk, like... At eight? You'd have to go and, like, get her? Oh, my God, that's so secret of her own inish, isn't it, age? <laughs> and, like, I don't know, but we had, I had to deal with that for, like, a year. And, um, like, she would bring guys over to the house. She would, like, it was crazy. And, you know. She was, like, dating? Uh, not or dating. Or not dating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Okay, so obviously at a very young age, yeah, right? Right. And you can say that for yourself, you've definitely dealt with depression, anxiety. Yeah. As well as even suicidal tendencies. Yeah. Hmm. I only said it that way because of the band, Suicidal <laughs> Tendencies. Right. Because I love them. <laughs> but anyways, um, but you've um, obviously... So I just, like with young people these days you know, dealing with everything that you have to deal with, not to mention COVID-19, you know? Right. So, so that's kind of how it started. Yeah. Yeah. And what else did you want to talk about? Um, um, I mean, we could go to when, um, this was after the year I spent with my, um, like spent in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I came back for a summer. So we are talking about when you were with your grandmother. Yes. Who had, um, uh, An alcohol was problem. it drunk? And, but she also had like weird dates. Yeah. Okay. That she brought home. Yeah. Did they make, did she make you call them mom? No. A dad? No, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> oh, no, that, that was weird though. But, um, yeah. So like when I came back, I was around like nine and, uh, so I only came for the summer. I was supposed to go back, whatever. And, um, my dad got this call from my aunts and, um, they were like, oh, don't let her go back. And 
um, I was like, why? And my dad's like, because your mom is doing meth. (laughs) Oh, the meth mom. Yeah, the meth mom. And, um, so then, uh, she went to jail for like a month. And so that happened. So then my dad never let me go back. Well, my dad went to jail. They all go to jail. Anyways, whatever. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, she didn't go for long though. (laughs) Um, but yeah, she was put on probation for a really long time. Um, she just got off of it. So that, that's crazy. But, um, anyway, um, and then, so, you know how I was talking about the woman that my dad called every night? Right. And you had to call her mom and creepily mom. That is the stepmom I had for eight years. <sighs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay, a really I, weird situation. I'm not sure how to react to that. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's move on. Okay. Cause, um, yeah, I'm not to be too mad about that. Or judgy. <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, she like, she was just really strict and she made my dad feel like crap all the time because she didn't work at all, like for eight years and my dad was the only one working. So he was all stressed all the time and everything. And she just kind of made him, you know, feel bad. Well, I just love that when you're not working and you can, like, um, kind of, like, boss everybody else around and tell them what to do and make them feel like crap. I love that. Love it. Right. And taking, like, I don't know. She would take my phone all the time for no reason. I don't know. It was crazy. And then It was the collared crack dealer, obviously. (laughs) I know it wasn't your mom. I'm just kidding. (laughs) But um, Well, we don't know, actually. Who knows? Who knows? (laughs) Yeah. But, um... Yeah, uh, so, like, around middle school, um, she was just really strict, and my dad would be, you know, rude and be kind of mentally abusive, which he never would have done that ever in his life, because I've always been a daddy's girl, you know, and... Yeah, and just so you guys know, um, her dad calls her strawberry shortcake. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Um, yeah, (laughs) and... I don't know, but yeah, I'm having a stroke apparently. Um, so mental abuse, yeah, that happened. And then, um, around my eighth grade year, um, he kind of stopped doing that and realized how much Suzanne was impacting my life and his. And, but yeah. So you think, do you think your dad figured it out on his own or because you said something? Not that you were, like, really young, so it's, like, but then again, like, from eight to eight years later, Mm -hmm. so it's, like, did he realize it on his own, or were you, like, hey, dad, this is not right? Um, I would try to talk to him all the time, because I was, like, oh, dad, um, you know, she kind of (laughs) sucks, like. (laughs) Yeah, but that's, well, that's not clear, but yeah. (laughs) And I would always say, like, um, oh, yeah, no, she is rude to me she slapped me one time um she slept you once in eight years i think you're fine right right just kidding (laughs) no no you're right um (laughs) no so it wasn't physical it's probably more mental yeah um it was hold on first of all that slap though it's kind of funny thinking about it now but like really i didn't clean my room once she took my phone and then she was like rachel why didn't you wake up this morning i was like i don't know and she was like, huh? It's your fault, isn't it? Huh? And I was like, what? Whoa. And I, like, didn't say anything. And then she slapped me and I was like, wait, okay, okay, back up. <laughs> so, okay, so have you and your dad ever spoken of this? Yeah. Did he, she treat him like this? No. Because you know what I'm saying? Because, like, when you just, like, kind of go loopy and you're like, wait, were you always like this? What? <laughs> Because, like, you said that he always felt bad and he always, like, was kind of depressed and shit. Yeah. So it makes me wonder if she ever treated him like that. Like, um... I wonder. Because I don't even know. It makes me wonder if, like, something happened ahead of time, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, my dad hasn't talked about it, but she would just pick fights with him all the time. That's okay, so, but, like, the stem of your anxiety right. and your depression started with her, you think? Or started with how your dad treated you? 
Uh, I would say, like, um, her, because she was always rude before my dad ever was. Right, but he also did it to you as well. Yeah, I and would that say probably it got worse. That probably didn't help anything, correct? No. Yeah. Um, yes, you're correct. <laughs> I said no, but, um, like, I would say it got worse when that happened. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And then, but after that, you seemed to turn around a bit, mm-hmm. or? No, it, or? Yeah, it did. Um, like, in my ninth grade year, he gave me more freedoms, and Suzanne hated that. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, okay, so let me ask you, at what age did you decide to start cutting yourself? Ooh, um... Because that's not exactly depression, mm -mm. but it's, like, not feeling good about yourself. When did that start? I would say around 7th or 8th grade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Was there a trigger, or you're just like, hey, gonna do this? I mean, I would say that there was triggers, like, I don't know, I would always... I don't know, actually. That's a good question. It's, like, hard to say because of how long ago it was. But it's... Oh, it's... Okay, so it's been long enough that it's... It's been a while, but there's, like, not one thing that triggers it. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's more like I don't think it's a one thing. I don't... That's what I think it is. I don't think it's, like, a one... Oh, triggered. Like, one day I'm going to cut myself. Right, of course. Like, Like, I don't think anyone is... Does it just for one thing. No. No. It's... You're trying to fill some kind of void. Right. And, um, you don't know what that void is. Right. And whatever. Do you still cut? Um, I haven't for, like, four months. So, like, four months clean, I guess. Um. Why'd you stop? Good people in my life. Aw. That's awesome. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) But, um, yeah. That's my kid. That's age. (laughs) Hi. But, um, yeah, um, so, um, back onto the thing with my step mom, I hate calling her that, but I do too. And I don't <laughs> want to dwell on that too much right. because I feel like she's super negative. Right. And no, I I'm... don't like that. So when a quarantine hit, so around like April, mm. uh, well, obviously it hit Well, March. it was like March right. of 2020. We're a year later now. So tell me. <sighs> yeah. Um, so I... Oh, okay. Um, well, she left in, like, April. And she took my dog. But, um, so... I was she in this... She took your dog? She took my dog. And, yeah. But I was in this relationship for a really long time. And, um... Yeah, <laughs> everything was good in the beginning. Um, it, for the most part. Uh, and during quarantine, I got to, like, live with him. And he, like, lived with me, so it was, like, a, kind of, like, a, you know, a two thing. I don't know how to explain that, but... Okay. Symbiotic relationship. I, I, well, you thought it was. Symbiosis is, like, it's, like, it's equal. So, symbiotic, like, you assume it's going to be equal, So, but it's not always, but you thought it was at first. Right. Okay. Um, so, like, April was good. Um, June was good. And for the most part, uh, everything started kind of going downhill. And um, a lot of things would, like, go on between us. We'd have these stupid little arguments, and they would get bigger. Um, uh, (laughs) We got together in August of 2020, and so we were together for a year. Um, But... So, um, August 2019, you mean? Yeah, my bad. Tw- my August 2019. Yeah, yes, that's not my that's, bad. As in, hey, it's okay. Wow, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. I feel you. Go to August 2020. Um, so when it started going downhill, there was this one fight that kind of triggered me a lot. Uh, we were in his room and we had friends over. And suddenly he started getting really, like, upset. And, like, uh... Hold on. (laughs) It's okay, breathe. Um, anyway, he started getting really upset. And so he, um, 
like, kind of closed off himself in his room. And I was like, I'll be right back, you know? And then four hours later, I came out of the room um, with him. With, like, he was still in the room. And I was like, because one, one of our friends had to leave. And while in that four hours, he punched a hole in his wall. Um, he would punch stuff and he would be like, oh, are you that scared of me, Rachel? Or... Well, okay. Uh... Pause right I don't there. Know how I explain it. Pause right there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Back up, okay? Because you guys are both young, so I don't know. He's older than you, but were his parents home at the time? Really? Yeah. Um. Anyways, okay. So he really said that, like, in front of. Did he say it in front of his parents? No, he had a basement room, so they didn't hear anything. Well, did he ever explain why he thought that he was angry enough to punch a hole in the wall? No. But then, but you, did you feel kind of threatened that somebody said that to you? Yeah. Well, because, like, I, honestly, like, so what we've heard is that a lot of mental abuse has gone on in your life. But when you're, it's not like he physically hurt you, but physically threatened in a way right so how did that make you feel you broke up with him correct no you still stayed we for months after that not th not that this is the case at all but sometimes when you're used to abuse you kind of let it go and yeah. you kind of let it continue right until you feel that moment where you're just like, um, I think I can fix this. Or I can get over it. Or I can move on. Or some people turn destructive where they... Well, let's just say sometimes when you feel you've been wrong so many times, you take it out on others. And... I don't feel like that's the case. So, you guys kind of let it fizzled. But, now that you're so far past um, the breakup and getting over that mental abuse, it probably feels way better. Right. Right. Well, does it? I'm not, that's, um, I'm not trying to project on you at all. No, I know. Um. I'm just saying, how does it feel knowing that you're not in that relationship anymore? It feels good. Yeah. But does it make you feel good about yourself? Or um, do you still have these anxiety and depression issues? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Nothing ever fixes everything, right? No. Hey, if it's not something, it's something, something else. else. It's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it, that wasn't like the first time it happened. There was multiple times like, um. Oh, you mean dry. like before he had this little breakdown, it happened before? That was, like, probably the worst one that happened, like, first, and then it started getting worse and worse and worse. But you said this happened over the span of a year, though? Yeah. What else happened? Um, like, that night that I was talking about, um, he, I was like, so, we're sitting in his room, and I was like, oh, well, are you, like, in a way, I was like, are you done, but not in that way, you know, just, it's fine. Um, if that makes sense. Hold on. Um, he was ranting, and you're like, "Are you done?" Well, yeah, kind of like that. Mm. But he wasn't ranting or anything. He was just being moopy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so we left, and I was like, "Why don't we just go to my house?" And we go, and he was like, "Why don't we go get snacks from Seven Eleven?" And I was like, "Okay." And like, I kind of blocked out six hours of that what just happened six and i was like okay hmm so we went to 7-eleven 
and we pulled in and we got all of our snacks together and he put his card in and it declined. So he threw a bag of chips on the floor and was like, oh my God, like yelling. It was really stupid. And <laughs> he ran out the door like a crybaby. So I picked up the chips and I was like, I am so sorry. And I put them on the, on, like near the cash register and I like ran out. And when I got in the car, he, like, pulled away really fast. And then he, like, drove away super fast. And then, like, the in the alley behind 7-Eleven, he, like, stopped abruptly and he, like, got out. And I was, like, kind of in shock for, like, five minutes. And I just, like, didn't say anything. I didn't get out or anything. But what was he doing if he got out? He was kicking the car and he was just, like, super angry. I don't really feel like this is the car's fault at this point. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, and you don't think? <laughs> I totally don't think. So I finally got out, or, yeah, I finally got out of the car, and I was like, why are you being like this? And he was just like, I don't know. And whatever. And that was then, his answer, I don't know? Yeah. Maybe he really didn't. Right. Whoa. Do you know anything about his family's life? Is it messed up? Um, not really. Okay. Not, like, all, really. Does he have any um, mental issues that you know of? Really bad anger issues. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> but, um, yeah. So then we went to my house and whatever, and it's fine. Um, so then other times, um, there's this one time where he was, I don't know, yelling for no reason, and that night I was just, like, kind of too scared to sleep by him. So I kind of moved over, and he was like, are you that scared of me? Like, he would always do that. Or if I would, I would ask him if he was okay a lot of the time. Dude, that's like so threatening though. So let me ask you this. Um, so his parents, like you guys are young. And if you're like sleeping together and you're like with each other and like almost living with each other, what did your parents think? What did your dad think about you being with him all the time? And what did your, his parents think? Did they have any opinion or did they just like, like let you guys do what you want and let you fail? Um, and I don't mean fail in a bad way, just, like, let you, like, do it without, uh, direction. Right. Um, well, I mean, his parents were around a lot more than my dad was, in a way. Um, so his, like, stepmom and his dad, um... Oh, stepmom and dad. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long have you been married? They were awesome. Um, oh, they were awesome? Oh, yeah, okay. no, his dad okay. loved me. His um, stepmom loved me. So that was not the point? No. Okay. But um, so, like, his family dynamic was, like, he was supported. And he was... Really supported. With okay. everything. Okay. Did your dad ever say anything about your relationship? Um, I mean, he... I mean, like every dad, I guess, he, you know, doesn't want his daughter growing up so fast, but... Yeah, but... He didn't say anything, right? And he didn't... And he wasn't... Um, no, I wouldn't... He didn't stop it? No. Okay. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say anything, really. Okay. All right, well, I was going to say, it sounds like... <sighs> totally re emotional relationship. Right. <laughs> Did you ever freak out like that on him? Would you tell me if he did? Yeah. Okay. Um. You know what I mean? Because if you're embarrassed, like, whatever, like, that's totally cool. But. I mostly would do it out of defense. Mm. Like, if he yelled at me, I'd yell at him back. Well, well that's different. Right. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm like, you didn't, like, lash out at him for, no. like, throwing a bag of chips on the floor. <laughs> no. Um. I mean, I wouldn't say that I was perfect in every way and, or anything. Like, it was definitely a two-way thing, but I wasn't the one with the really bad anger issues. No, no. Yeah. No, I got that. <laughs> but, um, like, I mean, oh, I don't know. I just, I put up these, like, walls. Like, um, every time something bad happened, I, no one knew. Like, no, not my best friend, not my dad, not his parents. No one knew. Like, I just kept everything bottled. Because mm. I didn't want anyone to hate him. If that makes sense? No, it does. But why did you care so much about that? Because I loved him. 
Did you really, though? Who knows? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I would say... Yeah. Well, no, like, in the moment, I could see you saying yes. But you're past it. Can you honestly say that you loved him? Of course I did. Or just, or did you, did you just think you loved him? Because in, like, hindsight, it's twenty twenty. Right. Right, age? Yeah. It's a joke between us, sorry. Right. No, you're fine. Um, <laughs> and I'm not, like, just staring at you to, like, make you feel bad about no, stuff. That's not I my know. point. I know. Yeah. Um, like, ugh, I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> Do you feel guilt about this relationship at all? And I don't mean, like, your own guilt. Do you wish that you could have just... Got, gone past it and not had this anxiety about it? Because obviously it wasn't a good relationship. Now that you know that. Right. You know? Um, yeah. Do you have anxiety about other relationships? No. I not don't. your current one? Yeah. Uh, I told her about Harley. You did? Yeah. Just a little bit. Oh. <sighs> But no, no, I'm just saying. So knowing what you know about relationships going forward, do you feel good about this one? Yeah. I do. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've known her for years. Oh, really? Yes. Did uh, she used to live here? Yeah. Or wait, wait, wait. You, you lived in Texas. Did you meet her there? Or no. Did... She lived oh, in, okay. she lived here. Yeah. Um, I met her in fifth grade. Yeah. But, and um, you guys are like besties? Yeah. She's always been in love with me. So. Yeah? And you, well, obviously, you reciprocate that, right? Yeah. Yeah? I just always held it off because I thought it was, you know, I thought it was stupid. Well, no, but, okay, so listen. So after all this stuff that we've talked about, I hate saying listen, sorry. No, sorry. you're okay. Like a, like a teacher or whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. So after the relationship crap that you've been through, but you feel, like, positive about this one? Yeah. Yeah? Because she's not toxic like that. <laughs> well, that's great. But, like, you know it, right? And yeah. you, like, feel it? Because, okay, so the problem, I think, is sometimes when you go through, like, a weird trauma, you can't trust anymore. So I think it's cool that you can move on and trust. Right. Yeah. And And obviously, how does your dad feel about her um he loves her because he's, he's known her for a long time too so. yeah does he know that you guys are like mm, no just friends he knows that you're friends yeah um okay. i mean it's not like i couldn't tell him or anything i definitely could i just she's just not here yet so when she gets here i probably will yeah but is she gonna move back here or are you gonna move over there well she's gonna move with me okay and <laughs> It sounds crazy, but we're going to live in a camper and travel the world. <laughs> so. Sweet. Do you guys have a camper picked out? Yeah. So. She's getting it, and we're going to save up money and everything. I think that's cool. Yeah. If you feel good about it, I think that's cool. Right. Well, yeah. Like, moving on is always positive. Yeah. And, you know, and don't feel good about it. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> um... I guess, like, a lot of people that I know, espe like, especially myself, but, um, a lot of people that I know, like, they'll go through all this trauma, mm -hmm. and then something good will happen, and they feel like they don't deserve it at all. And well, let's not let you be that person. <laughs> right. It's not, it's not deserving. You know how people, like, people feel like the world owes them? There's yeah. way too many people like that. So, maybe if you've suffered a touch... You know, like, maybe maybe your brain can, like, realize, like, hey, I deserve this. Yeah. You know, don't be gloaty about it, because everybody hates that. Right. But, like, you know, like, be happy. Yeah. You deserve to be happy. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks so much, Rachel, for being yeah. honest with us. And, like, I know this stuff is super embarrassing, but I really appreciate your time and thank you so much. And thank you, AJ, 
for letting Rachel come on. They're besties. Yes. So I didn't. <laughs> so I didn't want like to, you know, not mention AJ because he's you know he's a brat in my kid. Hi, I'm here too. Yeah. So, but I really appreciate your like um, your honesty. Of course. It's so important, and I think that like when we all suffer traumas. That, like, sometimes we need to, like, talk about it sometimes. It's kind of... I totally think this is, like, therapy for me, honestly. So when you guys can come on and share this therapy with me, it means the world to me. Right. Just so you know. Okay. So, anyways, thank you, Rachel, so much. My hope is that no one has to live in fear, ever. And as always, I will never give up and read the signs. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Rachel Vallis-Nor, and this is the podcast, Hell is Not the End. <laughs> <laughs>